Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Richard, and I'm the Managing Director of Bank of Ains. You have all joined the session this afternoon specifically so that you can learn about Autodesk's new introduction of moving to plans for people. What this really encompasses is a continued shift towards a software as a service environment. What I am going to be doing now is um, just wanting to make sure that I've got everything technologically taken care of. Right. So let's get started. Please note there is a disclaimer on today's presentation. This information is coming to you directly from Autodesk and is subject to change. Bank of Ains indemnifies itself against these changes and cannot be held responsible for changes Autodesk may make. Sorry, I see that there is a typo there. The pricing shown today is only indicative, but please do contact us for relevant pricing um, as and when you are ready. So, with that said, let's get started. Um, the question that we're going to answer today is specifically, why does it benefit a customer to partner with a software as a service company? What is changing immediately and how does a customer transition? Firstly, I want to start off by making sure that this applies to you. How do you know if this will apply to you? Well, if you've got the following licensing, multi-user licensing, multi-user, multi-year licensing, or maintenance plan licensing. Those are really the three main categories of licensing that is going to be affected by these changes. With that said, what are the benefits that you can expect from your software as a service provider? The first is with regards to users and to be recognized as a user, not to be recognized as a serial number. The recognition as a, of, as a user is um, quite widespread. All of us are familiar with it from an online banking perspective. So using your CAD products should be no different. Furthermore, there are different plans that you can adopt that would help you depending on the type of organization that you are and depending on the different types of requirements that you have of the software. And thirdly, it's about helping give you choice, specifically flexibility, choice of access, choice of deployment. All three of those are what's going to be covered in today's webinar. So what is happening this year? This year, Autodesk is launching new plans that are based on people and retiring plans that are based on serial numbers. How does this actually work? Well, in the past, you would remember that you have received serial numbers. Remember, this is only applicable to the multi-user and the multi-year and the maintenance plan customer base at this stage. But in the past, you would have received a serial number and then now we're talking about actual individuals. And I think that that's a far better way of recognizing um, these changes that are taking place. Why a named user specifically? So firstly, it's about helping understand what that user has, what that user needs. Um, it's, as I said, this isn't the first software service company who's doing this. And I think it's really important that everyone understands that this is a really good move on behalf of Autodesk because it does allow us to have better handle on the application of the use of applications in use and the people that need to use them. You're also able to have a look at um, other software vendors uh, who have made use of a similar sort of thing. Almost everything now is based on a name and a user address or an email address, and this will be the same. But specifically, it also encourages collaboration because you collaborate with people. You don't collaborate with serial numbers. So let's talk about these plans based on serial numbers and what the benefits are. So specifically, one of the major benefits in moving towards a named user environment is to help you optimize your license costs so that you don't have serial numbers or licenses that are in use for people who maybe don't even work in the organization anymore. Um, and it's a large problem in many organizations. 
And also serial number orientation gives you limited visibility, whereas in the new environment, these plans are based on named users. So you have an ability to understand the visibility into the usage, the products, the versions. You're also able to increase productivity. Um, and what, by, what do we mean by that is, well, really it's about giving licenses to people who need it when they need it. And, you know, when you're able to allocate license access or remove license access, that's that instant kind of usage that Autodesk are promoting through this um, change. It also, it also allows you to reduce your IT costs and actually give you an opportunity to completely rationalize the licensing that you may already have. Because in the past, there was a lot of time wasted in terms of server installation, serial numbers, compliance, those kinds of things. Now, the Autodesk licenses would be managed by Autodesk and assigned by a particular person. And um, specifically, your contract manager would log into, the Autodesk person, log into the Autodesk portal and allocate it accordingly. Why are we specifically looking at moving towards the plans? So, these types of plans that are being introduced, there is a standard, a premium, and an enterprise. The standard plan is for individuals and small businesses who need the essential administrative tools. They don't necessarily need a lot of metadata, connecting with third party tools and such like. Then there are premium plans, which are for large, larger organizations who are seeking advanced administrative tools or security and detailed reporting. And then large, lastly, there are enterprise plans, which are for large global organizations who require the highest level of control plus dedicated support from Autodesk. Now, these different plans have different benefits and they have different features. I think it's interesting to note that for today's presentation, we're not going to be discussing enterprise. We're only going to be discussing standard and a little bit of premium. Specifically on the premium side of things, this is not ready to be introduced. This is only going to be introduced in June. And um, for a small additional fee, uh, customers are able to view and export product usage with, without user details. You're able to view and export product usage with user details. And it gives you, it gives you more insight into your usage of the product. This also helps you reduce license waste, reduce provisioning time for other licensing, and improve on uptime. There are going to be some immediate changes that are going to be implemented. And let's talk through these because these can be fairly complex. So the first is on the 7th of May 2021, so this is next year, subscriptions with multi user access and maintenance plans will retire. This means that if you have a maintenance plan in place currently, it can no longer be renewed after the 7th of May, 2021. The last version of the design and creation suites will be released in April of this year, 2020, and the last date to renew these suites will be the 16th of April, 2020. So let's go through these effective dates and see what's changing when. The first is this 7th of May maintenance or multi-user trade-in. So from the 7th of May this year, customers are able to trade in one standalone maintenance seat for a standard, for a standard subscription at the 2019 maintenance price. Secondly, the other user trade-in is a multi-user trade-in where you're able to trade in one multi-user subscription or network maintenance seat and get two subscriptions at a similar price to the current rate. This is very beneficial to all of you who are in the situation where you have one license that is being shared between two people or more. Autodesk have done the global research and um, they, according to their global research, it looks at about 1.8 users per license in a multi-user environment. If, however, you feel your organization has a different ratio of usage, please get in touch with us. Starting in February already, there were no new sales or renewals of two or three year multi-user subscriptions. These got stopped in February. Furthermore, 
on the 7th of May, 2020, no new sales of one year multi-user subscriptions. It'll be renewals only. Autodesk are also retiring something called an ETR, which is an extra territory rights licensing model. South Africa has very few users of this. It's a very specialized type of application for very specific customers, but it's useful to know. And then on the 7th of May 2021, there will be no renewals of one year multi user subscriptions. And you know, what you can see you're being given basically one full year, one full calendar year to transition into the new model. There is also going to be a 20% price increase on maintenance licenses for any remaining licenses on the 7th of May of this year. And there are not going to be any more renewals of maintenance plans or maintenance trade-ins after the 6th of May 2021. The premium plan will launch on the 7th of June and it will be available at an added cost. The last release and renewal of the design and creation suites is the 16th of April. Being implemented shortly is a 5% increase on new single user subscriptions. Why? What it is we're going to honor the renewal prices and they're wanting to make sure that the renewal pricing is slightly cheaper than to buy new licenses. Lastly, Many of you would have heard, we unfortunately sit in a very volatile market from an emerging countries perspective and we have been notified by the distribution network that there is a price increase effective on the 11th of March. So there are going to be two price increases in a very short period of time. It doesn't necessarily just say that it will be affecting you but I can tell you that the exchange rate price increase will affect absolutely everybody. There are going to be some new trading offers that Autodesk are implementing. The first is how do you transition from a standalone maintenance plan? So if you've got maintenance and it's a standalone maintenance license, you're able to trade in that license for a standard subscription plan um, starting on the 7th of May 2020, ending on the 6th of May 2021, whereby you're able to trade in your one maintenance plan license and get one subscription user named license. You are able to upgrade to the premium plan for approximately 5,000 Rand per subscription annually. However, it's important to know that this pricing is subject to Rand dollar exchange rate fluctuations and will only be available in the middle of June. We're not, none of these licenses are eligible for trade-in under the enterprise plan. Then how do you transition from multi-user subscription or network maintenance? This is a slightly different offer whereby you're able to, at your next renewal, trade in one of these licenses for two subscriptions on a standard plan. This also starts on the 7th of May. It is really useful because, as I had said, Autodesk have done the global research and they have ascertained that there's approximately 1.8 licenses in use in the multi-user environment. So it's a good opportunity for you to reconcile your licensing. Um, the standard in the standard plan, it's two subscriptions for two named users. You are able to upgrade to the premium plan for the same amount of money. However, as I mentioned on the previous slide, Autodesk are yet to release all the information required for the premium plans, and these are coming on the 7th of June. These licenses, of course, are also not eligible for enterprise licensing. So how do you trade in your multi-user license and suggested retail price? Now, here what I've done is I've taken rough calculations. If you are sitting in a situation where you have five multi-user AutoCADs, these are the AutoCADs that include specialized toolkits, you'll see that average price per subscription is about 45,000 Rand. If you do 
the two for one trade in, you will be looking at those licenses costing about 22,000 Rand. The same calculation has been done using an AEC collection, and you can see it's quite dramatically cheaper. So, whilst I understand it might feel like these are complex changes, in many instances from an organizational perspective, you might find that it's actually going to work out um, better for you financially. And this is why Autodesk have, have put this offer on the table. The reason why I have said await final launching information is because there are still some things that might be subject to change, and I would prefer more information about the premium plans before we uh, went to market with them finally. How do you trade in multi-users if they, it's an M2S license? What that is, is that is a maintenance to subscription. It's the same sort of process. Um, again, it's that two for one offer, it's a really beneficial offer, and you can see from a pricing perspective, it's very advantageous. So Autodesk are really making sure that you are taken care of from your initial investment. Again, with the premium plan, not making any final launch information available right now. Um, and it's, it's not necessarily going to be the sort of thing that will suit every organization. So what is it that you need to do now? The first thing that I would suggest that you do is that you engage with us as your Autodesk partner. You can do that either by emailing info at bakerbanes.com or by calling into us on 011-568-2060. First step is to engage. The second step is to assess your licensing. Let us help review your usage and requirements. This is a very good time to rationalize your licensing. It's a very good time to look at people in the organization. If they don't need access to the licensing, do you need to give them access to the licensing and vice versa? So let us help you assess your technology requirements. And then lastly, make a decision. Unfortunately, with these sorts of situations, time isn't always on our side. It is important to make decisions ahead of time. And our role is to inform you of all of the facts, but your role is to decide what is going to be best for your business. So those are really um, the things that we feel are most appropriate in terms of next steps. With that said, I want to thank all of you for your time today. And I would like to also ask if there are any questions. If you have any questions for me, please feel free to put them in the, uh, in the chat box. I can see someone is starting to type something. Okay, so it doesn't seem like there are any questions coming through specifically. As always, we're available to help you. It's not going to necessarily affect everybody, but it is very useful to understand what these changes are. So please be in touch with my staff. Remember, it's basically very important to make sure that you review your technology requirements now um, so that you're able to be ahead of the curve. I don't have anything else that I'd like to add. Thank you very much for joining our webinar and I really hope that the information that was shown was useful to you. And that's it from my side.